Will intersectionality or wokeness succeed or fail at taking over our institutions? Hello, welcome to Dangerous Policy, a channel aimed at intelligent people wanting to discuss important issues facing life and society. My name is Crispin, and today I want to give an assessment of whether or not the current zeitgeist of intersectionality, critical race theory, wokeness, if you like, is going to permanently overturn those institutions of Western liberal democracy. And on the one hand, there are some obvious reasons to be pessimistic. It's completely taken over academia. Uh, it has resulted in a lot of people, a lot of students coming through major institutions, particularly in the United States, going on and becoming major players in major institutions like the media, like Hollywood, politics. And so some people might say, look, it's already a fait accompli. These things have already conquered the great institutions of Western liberal tradition. And by that specifically, it is a, a philosophy and ideology that, that dictates that the world is primarily described as a relationship of intersectional power oppressions, where there is a hierarchy of individuals uh, at the top, I like the trans black uh, woman who has been uh, oppressed and had her voice silenced because of a oppressive, gendered, heteronormative patriarchy. And at the, at the bottom of this uh, pyramid, if you like, is the heterosexual white male who is the oppressor uh, versus the oppressed. It's a neo-Marxist philosophy that divides people based on their collective group identity over their individual um, personal sovereignty and says that you can uh, basically divide every relationship up into being either a victim or an oppressor. And that based on your intersectional points, if you like, determines how much of a victim you are and thus how much validity you have in terms of the redistribution of resources in that culture. It is without question ascendant in many ways. And, and one of the most shocking instances, I mean, you, you can count to literally thousands, but one of the most shocking instances is uh, at Eton College, in the United Kingdom, the most famous elite boys' school in the world, founded in 1440 under Henry VI, uh, is uh, you know renowned for producing the absolute high flyers of international society. Uh, a, a lot, perhaps even a majority, of British prime ministers, uh, certainly uh, you know Hollywood actors. Uh, philosophers, mathematicians, uh, CEO Fortune 500 uh, leaders. Uh, these are all, you know, Etonites. Uh, and yet, uh, a school that prides itself on providing a Western liberal education where people debate the, the ethics of Aristotle and Socrates and, and uh, you know, learn ancient Greek and Latin as part of their normal curriculum, uh, a school where debate is considered the highest form of critical thinking. They even have a debating room at Eton College. Well, a excellent teacher, uh, Mr. Nolan, created a presentation, which you can watch on YouTube, on the patriarchy. And the debate about the patriarchy, on the one hand, that it is a social construct uh, designed to effectively uh, maintain male dominance in a, in a you know cultural oppression of women versus uh, a perspective of, of biology that that there is a um, biological evolution that we see in primates and others that that create these kinds of social constructs for uh, good evolutionary reasons and Mr. Law was presenting that as a debate. Topic. You weren't supposed to be indoctrinated one way or the other uh, to encourage the students to argue, okay, to what extent is a patriarchy a social construct or a biological um, evolutionary psychology? And the mere fact that he had done this saw him suspended and ultimately dismissed because Eaton did not want to engage in critical debate on this important subject. This is just one example of many, but the fact that Eton College 
could be captured by woke ideology. It's just almost unbelievable, right, given the, the venerable nature of that, that institution. And yet there are also reasons to be optimistic. And the first reason is that woke ideology intersectionality is wrong. And the fact that it is wrong in many respects does lend itself to critical weaknesses because sometimes it can only enforce itself through fiat. We saw that through Eton College where they suppressed the debate. But then the contradictions become rather glaring. Richard Dawkins the other day was stripped of his humanist award uh, from the 1990s because he asked for a debate on a particular subject. He put out a tweet that uh, spoke to the point of Rachel DeLiesel. Rachel DeLiesel was a woman in the United States who identified as black. She, she kind of ha put on dark skin, had a frizzy hairstyle, went around telling everyone she was black uh, and got all these kind of uh, you know diversity roles and things at various institutions as a black woman. Well, it turned out she was white. Uh, her her uh, you know parents are white. Everyone said you know she's white. She's she's pretending to be black, and she insisted that she identifies as a black woman. She be treated as a black woman, and yet all of the workers, all of the intersectionals, absolutely cancelled her, disowned her, said look. She's obviously a fraud. She's trying to pretend something she's not. She's trying to capture for herself the black experience, i.e. that she's obtaining oppression points that she doesn't deserve because she's an oppressor white woman, right? And yet there is a contradiction, obviously, because, yes, your race, your skin color is an immutable characteristic about you, uh, whereas you know, with trans people, the same groups of people the wokes, the intersectionals, will insist trans men are men, trans women are women, right? And will use the term TERF as a slur, trans exclusionary radical feminist, for any feminist that says, look, there are certain biological essentialist characteristics of being a woman. There is something about the female experience that is immutable that a, that a man, a biological male, just can't assume. So, for example, you know, women's safe spaces, domestic violence shelters, uh, all of those sorts of things, you know, prisons, where these feminists uh, are arguing for women-specific uh, consideration, which are being attacked by these workers and intersectionals. And on one level, uh, you know, race is an even less of an immutable characteristic than, than sex. You know, sex chromosomes are in every single cell in your body. We lack the technology to change sex, biological sex from one to the other. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, race, you know, melanin, all of that, I mean, that's literally skin deep. So this, this uh, discrepancy, this inconsistency with something that Richard Dawkins says, look, let's discuss, let's debate this. Uh, and the mere fact that he had put that out, he didn't say that, you know, Rachel DeLisle should be treated one way or the other or that trans people should be treated one way or the other. He said, look, we have an intersectional theory about sex and we're not willing to apply that to race. Let's talk about it. The problem was that that just blows up instantly the whole intersectional narrative, right? Because it's clear that there is an inconsistency and a contradiction and these things cannot exist together and they know that if they have this debate in an open and critical thinking way, people will reject this ideology as being materially false. So what was the result? Well, lots of people came online to just shout down Richard Dawkins as this transphobic, whatever, whatever, racist, whatever, whatever, uh, and you know, started stripping him of titles and things like that without ever addressing that point. And that is the only weapon a lot of these groups have, which is to deperson you. It's not to win through the conflict of ideas in which good ideas supplant bad ideas because they know that their ideas are fundamentally bad. And if you know that your ideas are bad, uh, then the only way you can win is through threats and intimidation, uh, not through intellectual and cognitive discourse. 
That doesn't mean that intersectionality will fail. Okay, uh, we see in North Korea, for instance, a lot of bad ideas succeed, and it's it's ruled through fiat. And from the moment you're born to the moment you die, you're fed one single narrative, and deviation from that narrative is a form of heresy that can send you sent to a gulag or worse. Uh, your entire pun- family will be will be subject to collective punishment for your rogue ideas. So, if you do manage to enforce an authoritarian ideology on the community, then yes, you can succeed. And and so long as uh, North Korea remains the hermit kingdom, that ideology will prevail. Uh, the biggest fear that the North Korean regime has is that its people are exposed to ideas from the rest of the world and realize the fundamental lie that sits at the heart of their Jewish philosophy. Whereas the, when we have uh, here in the West, uh, the same sort of thing is starting to prevail. We see censorship in big tech. We see censorship uh, within um, you know, progressive politics. Uh, we see people being you know, cancelled and attacked for stepping out of line from the ideology that is prevailing. And so there is genuine fear and intimidation going on. And to the extent that that fear and intimidation succeeds, we are entrenching uh, this ideology in our culture. But if you resist that philosophy, or even if you believe in, in actual debate, like you might be sympathetic. There are a lot of people who, who believe in you know, patriarchy and, and intersectionality and all of that. And I respect people like that if they also are willing to you know, believe in freedom of speech and freedom of thought and, the, and, and believe that their ideas can win in this marketplace because they think they're, that they're correct. I, I respect those people immensely. If they are unable to engage in that discourse, uh, and therefore uh, the only way they can win is through intimidation and threats, well, every quiet yielding to that outcome is surrendering to the final victory of workism and intersectionality. My message to you is, yes, you may get blowback for challenging this narrative, for engaging in critical thinking skills, but if there is one thing that Enlightenment tradition, the Western liberal tradition has taught us, is that critical thinking is the highest form of progressive science and the only way to engage in critical thinking, not critical race theory, critical thinking, is through a free exchange of ideas and questioning fundamental assumptions and presuppositions such as are we living in a socially constructed patriarchy? Is intersectionality based on individual identity supreme or not? If not, what are the limits? If yes, what are the the prerequisites, right? These things are all um, required for discussion. So hopefully you found value in this uh, series of examples. My own view is that uh, intersectionality will fail because we have too much of a free exchange of ideas uh, that I think has already peaked. I think it kind of peaked between 2013 and, and 2019. Uh, I think we're going to go through you know, a period of renewal as people start to reject this. I think younger people coming through uh, are going out of their way to seek different perspectives and ideas. Uh, we see it through YouTubers like, like this. Um, and you know, as long as it's done in an in a, you know, appropriate and respectful way, um, ultimately the, the bad ideas will fail and, and people will develop the sense of courage to you know, overcome the threat of, of being cancelled or being fired or or, or what have you, just to speak their truth and to speak their minds. Uh, and so long as that's the case, I think that the intersectionality's days are numbered. But that is my optimistic view. I'm not saying that that is a guarantee. There is a pathway to which uh, for generations to come, we go into a more authoritarian, less liberal, less open, less free exchange, greater degree of heresy uh, uh, you know, perspective on, on the world. That is a possible outcome. But I don't think that'll happen. That's my view. Uh, If you found value in this discussion, please hit that like button. Uh, Share this video with others that might be interested and subscribe if you haven't already. We're we're growing quickly. Uh, We're aiming for a thousand target very soon. Uh, So please hit that like button and be in in that first thousand members. Thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.